Welcome to Amsal TV. I'm outside Planet 13, the tattoo studio that opened in Amtel about three weeks ago. Over the last few days, this leaflet has been distributed to houses in Dunstable Street and the other side streets, making allegations about the tattoo studio. We're here to speak to the owners to see their reaction. Claire, you're the owner of Planet 13. What's your reaction to the leaflet that's been distributed around town? Um, I just think it's it's very poor taste into someone making the effort to put rumours around that aren't true. Um, it's you know it's it's not nice for you know small businesses to try and make a start and then people put these leaflets out saying you know we're going to be putting bloodstained tissues in the road and needles. I just feel it's cruel for today's society. You know we we. We, you know, we've all, most of us have got children. We're bringing them children up in the world, and it's just, you know, I just think this is slander and very unfair. Okay, in the leaflet they say that you carried out unauthorised alterations to a Grade Two listed building. It isn't Grade Two listed building. Our landlord actually got the deeds out. There is no form of Grade Two listed um, build, um, building on the deeds. So I just don't know where they have got the information from because it was the only information that is written down is the owner of the shop, the person who I rent it off of. They've also said no published opening times. We do not, by law, we do not have to publish what opening times we've got. There are in the window published times, but as you say, when you're doing an art piece, on, you're not guaranteed to finish dead on time. You may run over half an hour or more. We've given a service to the clients. We can't, you know, people coming in. If they're welcome, they're welcome to come in. And if they stay that bit longer, we can't just shut the door. But you're not legally having to show times on display. They've also alleged that um, you haven't applied for planning permission for a change of use. The planning permission is all going through, as, as the council will know. Um, I don't know where they're getting that information from because that should only be within myself and my husband. Uh, when did you apply for the change of use planning? When we got the letter from the council because we didn't, we didn't under know that it needed planning but it was only planning of use. So because if it became, um, as it was, an antique shop but if it was under hairdressers or a tattoo studio or beauticians you would have had to apply for the change of use. Uh, they also say uh, that you're not complying with in environmental health matters. Oh, we are. We are. Our environmental health officer has passed us with flying colours. We, we've, we've had them out to inspect. We're clean hygiene. We've got everything in stamp. And I think the only people that could take us up on the environmental health is themselves. Uh, they also have concerns about uh, causing an obstruction on an already narrow pavement. Uh, they mentioned the advertising board. The advertising board is a joke because that was Paul who had the antique shop. He gave it to us on loan for us to use for when we were here. So that has been out there 20 years and it has never became a problem. But when you look round Amptill, the A boards that are in the middle of the street that you do have to avoid, I can't see my being any more than a problem than anyone else's. Okay, how about uh, causing obstruction on the road with vehicles stopping outside? Well, I can't understand because I haven't had any customers that have parked up on these cobbled stones that are quite high. I wouldn't want to park up on it and ruin my tyres, so I, I really don't know where they're getting that from. Uh, inappropriate shop frontage and signage in a conservation area, not in keeping with surrounding buildings, and unapproved plastic signage and lighting. What do you say to that? Uh, I don't really, I can't really say anything because we haven't even painted, we, we never actually got time to paint the outside of the window, which we were, um, and it's still the original green from when the last owner had it. So I really, I can't comment on that because I can't see my signs are any different to the ones that are in town. And the matter that you've previously mentioned, the safe disposal of blood and used needles on a busy and narrow pavement where the children and elderly walk. Well, we're definitely not flicking needles out into the road and there's definitely not bloodstained tissues getting dri driven over. We dispose of them the way we should dispose of them and, that, and, and I just that's the bit that's slander really because I wouldn't put any child in that environmental health situation 
my children come in here and they stay in the reception part. And the last issue they raise is a precedent for other similar businesses opening. They say, uh, is this the commercial direction we want Amtel to take? Do you think there's an element of snobbery there? Oh, yes. I mean, at first, I couldn't understand it. Um, I kept on reading it and reading it and asking people, what do you think is meant by that? But I think, yeah, it's just Amtil tried to be posh, but, you know, it's not any different than anywhere else. How do you feel about the fact that the leaflet um, hasn't been signed? It's anonymous. Well, they're the cowards, aren't they? If they can't come forward and walk in the shop and ask, you know, express their views or, you know, actually say who they are, then they're obviously cowards for, and they know that they've done wrong because they would have signed it. Do you think this uh, publicity is going to backfire on them and you're actually going to get more trade out of this? We've just seen uh, ITN News here interviewing you. So uh, do you think uh, it's going to increase your business? Well, let's hope so. We can only hope for a new business. I mean, we're, we're good artists, so let's hope so. Claire and Tommy, uh, do you have all the uh, uh, certification that you need to run this uh, tattoo studio? Yes, we do. Um, I had my old registration currently from my old address. Um, then, pr then moving, we have them all in place. OK, thank you. Eddie O'Neill lives opposite the tattoo studio and his house is currently on the market. Eddie? Do you have any concerns about the tattoo studio opening? Uh, the only thing I would say was that I understand through speaking to the council planning department they don't as yet have any planning permission uh, for a change of use. What do you say to the people who s suggest that it could affect house prices? Uh, I'm not so sure that that would actually make a great deal of difference to be honest. Uh, it's good to see a new business in the town, no doubt about that, uh, but it has to be above board and everything should be you know, set, uh, set as should be from, from a council planning perspective point of view. A tattoo studio uh, has opened here in the background there. It's been open for three weeks now. Uh, have you got any concerns about it? Well, not really. Well, no. I'm too old to wear better things, I don't suppose. I was in the Navy and they had tattoos, so... I suppose, you know, it don't matter really to me. I can't, you know, it, it's, some people are upset, but I don't see having a tattoo upsets anybody really, does it? Or what do you think? Uh, well, I personally don't think there's a problem with it, but uh, it's interesting to speak to uh, uh, people in Amstel, and I'm not finding many people who do find it a problem. No. It's uh, good to have a business in, uh, in the shop unit there. It's only up to do with people who want a tattoo, really, isn't it? I mean, see, so if they don't have the tattoo here, they'll buy it somewhere else, won't they? And I mean, see, Amtil, now it, it is an old town, and I'm an old Amtil, and I was born here, but I mean, say, years ago it would have been unusual, but anything happened in Amtil now, doesn't it? Really, because, you know, everybody was. I don't know, years ago, Amptillion, you know, because my dad, you see, he was born here, more or less, and he died in his 80s. But years ago, I used to go and, he's dead now, I used to go and visit him, you see, and we used to talk about somebody, and he said, they're not Amptillions. I said, aren't they, Dad? He said, no, he said, they didn't come here till about 1930, you know, and this was in about 1960, you see, because to be an old Amptillion, you've got to be like me, born and bred. But now, once upon a time, I walked down the street and I said, hello, Jim, hello, Bob, hello, Tom, and all that, because I knew everybody. But now, I can walk down the street and I just don't need anybody, because I'm like 87 now. So everybody I knew had died, haven't they? And all the people that I see are just newcomers, so that, that's how it is. OK, thanks very much. OK. I'm, I'm sure you're aware there's a tattoo studio open just down the road. What, what do you think of that? Uh, it's all for the benefit of Amt Hill, I think. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Have you got any tattoos? I haven't myself, but I've, I've got no problem with tattoos. Uh, there's allegations that it's going to be uh, bad for business. Do you think that's true? Uh, I think in the current climate, any business opening should be welcomed. And I think it's... I 
I don't want to offend anybody, but it's old people with uh, unenlightened attitudes who are objecting to this. Okay, I'll say no more. <laughs> Um, what do you think about the tattoo studio opening in Amtel? I think it's a very good idea. Have you got any tattoos? I do, I have three. And uh, do you think you're planning on having any more now that you've got a studio, a uh, tattoo studio on your doorstep? Why not? Yeah, probably will. Uh, have you heard that there's a, a hate mail leaflet gone around? I have seen that, yes. I have seen it. And what do you think of the allegations that have been made? Um, I don't think they're founded at all. I think it's not really very nice thing to say about someone when you don't know the whole situation. Okay, thank you. Emma, you run uh, a local business here in Amtel Bowes. Uh, what do you think about the tattoo studio opening? Uh, apparently it's going to be bad for business. I think it's good for business. <laughs> it's good for me because there's more people coming to Amtel. Tattoos aren't what they wear. They're a fashion thing these days. So I have no objection whatsoever. And they're very nice, the people who run it. So there you go. Okay, thank you. Felix, you run a local business here in Amptel. Do you think it's going to be affected by the opening of the tattoo studio? Uh, no, it's just another business that's, um, that's opened, whereas I don't think the antique studio was really doing anything. So at least you've got people actually coming to Amptel and, and spending money. And uh, the people who run it seem like quite nice people. So I think anyone having any objections is just snobbery, really. Okay, thank you. What do you think of the tattoo studio that's just opened in Amtel? It's not my cup of tea. I'm sorry to say. Do, do you uh, think it's going to be a bad thing or a good thing, though? I think that depends on the clients, the clientele. Um, it keeps a shop open. It has that benefit rather than having a boarded-up shop. But... Uh, as I said, it's not my ilk, so I can't really comment too much on that side of it. it. I wouldn't go into it myself, but maybe some young people and others that might like it might use it. OK, thanks very much. Yeah. From what we've seen today here at Planet 13, the allegations in this leaflet appear not to be true at all. And it appears to be a very well-run, um, clean, hygienic, safe environment if you want to have a tattoo. Well, I'm sure there will be people in Amsterdam who are concerned about it, but there's always two sides to, to every argument. We'll let you make up your mind.